Hey guys, it's Eagle, and today I'm bringing you guys a new mini-series, Unit Comparisons. In each video, I'll showcase a group of units and compare and contrast the stats and uses of each. This way, you'll be able to choose the units that best fit your playstyle and improve your game. Let's get started with the tank class. The tank group consists of six units. Longhorns, Geminis, Armadillos, Busters, Goliaths, and Devastators. First up is the Longhorn. The Longhorn is the iconic tank in Air Mech, which all players start with. Because it is a default starter unit, new players sometimes feel that they have to replace it with a more powerful tank. However, this is definitely not the case. Many loadouts are built around the Longhorn, and it has won millions of games. It is capable of all this because of its strong overall stats and its diversity on the battlefield. It can spearhead attacks, defend outposts, and deter enemy mechs. Known as the tank killer, it has relatively good mobility, so it should be used offensively. Put almost all of your longhorns at the fight in the front lines. You can also quickly create a powerful push to grab an enemy outpost or finish off the base. Although it is pretty much the most versatile unit in the game, it should not be used to defend your base or be left unattended by itself because its slow turret rotation makes it an easy target for the enemy. It works well in unison with fast units so it doesn't get distracted. Now that we've covered a general overview, let's look at the stats. I created these stat cards for all the major units in the game so you can easily compare different units. The stat bars are relative to the other units in the same group. By looking at the stats, we can see that the Longhorn is above average in almost all aspects of the game. It does a large amount of damage and can soak up a lot of hits. Most mechs can carry two Longhorns at pretty low levels, and they won't slow down your push with their move speed. If you're unsure of what to build, just make Longhorn and you'll be alright. The next unit in the tank family is the Gemini. This is the cousin of the Longhorn, and they play very similar roles in-game. The Gemini has two barrels, which makes it look very intimidating. When it was first released, I replaced my Longhorn with it because I assumed two was better than one. However, this is not an upgrade to the Longhorn. In a straight up battle, a Longhorn will actually kill a Gemini pretty easily. So why choose it at all? Well, while the Longhorn is a tank killer, the Gemini is a light unit killer. Its double barrels quickly kill infantry, trucks, and mechs in its path. Let's take a closer look at the stats. As you can see, Gemini stats are quite similar to Longhorns. Gemini costs a little less and has a bit higher DPS. However, it has a lower weapon rating, meaning it doesn't do as much damage to tanky armored units, which is why it's no match for other tanks. It still performs well in a base push and can neutralize outposts in the blink of an eye. It's a toss-up between the two. Because of the great Gemini Longhorn debate, the armadillo usually slips under the radar, however it should not be underestimated. These little speed demons will have you scrambling to salvage what's left of your units if you're not careful. This tank was built for speed and efficiency, and it shows in both cost and effectiveness on the field. The armadillo is the early game tank, and it should be used at the start of the game to catch the enemy on their back feet. Use the element of surprise to make a daring Dillo push before they are able to set up a front line and defenses and quickly take map control. Then you'll be on your way to victory. Don't leave these tanks in the open in groups of less than 4 or 5, especially against mechs such as the Warthog, Saucer, or Bomber, because they will be quickly obliterated. Don't be discouraged if your pushes fail. As long as you have an even tank exchange, you will come out ahead because Dillos have such a low cost and build time. Just keep up the pressure and use plenty of mech support. Now let's look at the stats. When looking at the stat sheet, the categories that jump out at me are the move speed, carry weight, and build speed and cost. The numbers support the fact that it's a speed tank. It has the best damage to cost ratio of any tank, and you'll be able to quickly create a powerful army. Once you push them out, they'll be at the base before the enemy can blink because of their move speed, which is good because they die quickly, especially to mines and bombs. Some mechs can carry four of them at once, which is like carrying a mini army around. This is one of the most fun units to play with. I highly recommend trying it out. Now that we've gone over the three main tanks, let's move on to specialty tanks, starting with the Buster. 
This tank is built to take hits and do crazy damage on the front lines. Its long barrel is attached to the body, which forces it to turn its whole body in order to shoot an enemy. This means that fast light units and mechs can distract a buster long enough to kill it. This weakness is countered with its increased armor in the front, so it can win a fight head-on against almost any unit. Most mechs can't carry more than one, but if you do manage to put a few of these on the front of the mid-fight and support them with anti-air, you will win almost every time. Make sure that once you win the mid-fight, you replace them with a main tank, because they are the worst pushing tanks. When on a command, they will not shoot anything until they reach their destination. Let's look at the stats. By glancing at the bars on the stat sheet, it appears that the Buster is a good all-around tank, but that's far from the truth. It is only good in a stationary fight, so not for defenses or pushes. Don't be fooled by its impressive move, move speed either, because any Buster push will quickly be destroyed. It actually has surprisingly little HP, so if it's not taking damage from the front, it will die quickly. Definitely use this tank with supportive light units and mech killers. The Goliath is the iconic end-of-game hairbringer of death. It's so powerful it can't be built in-game until you're level 7. A Goliath has much more health and does much more damage than other tanks, and will win against any of them one-on-one. -on -one. To balance these crazy stats, it can't push very quickly and can be taken down by mechs and fast units if left alone because it has a slow turn speed. As soon as you can build these, I would recommend replacing your low level tanks. Goliath can't be taken as your only tank, but it will pay for itself if you can stay in the game long enough to bring them out. If a few of these start hammering on a base, it's game over pretty quickly. Same rules as other tanks apply for other gameplay mechanics, just make sure it's supported with healing units and anti-air, and it will take care of the rest. Goliath have really interesting stats. They are maxed for power and damage, while having minimal speed. Their carry weight also makes them a little harder to micro, so try using commands to move them around the battlefield whenever possible. You have to pay for its extra damage in HP with its high build cost and time. Other than that, it's a balanced late game unit. If the Goliath is the father of all tanks, the Devastator is the grandfather. This is the super tank that was created as a Goliath counterpart, similar to the Longhorn in Gemini. However, for the Devastator, they ramped up the stats to make it uber powerful. I actually made a separate video focusing on the Devastator when it came out, so I won't spend too much time on it now. Basically, anything you can do with a Goliath, you can do twice as well with a Devastator. Besides Micro, it is very difficult to move a Devastator anywhere, or heal it when it's damaged. It's not too good against mechs and light units, but it can definitely take a beating before you need to help it out. While not very practical, it does strike fear into the enemy. As you can see, a Devastator has even more lopsided stats than the Goliath. It has the most armor, damage, and health of any unit in the game. Keep in mind, though, that it costs more than three Goliaths and is not mobile at all. Personally, I don't recommend using this anywhere besides the occasional 3v3 and survival game. Otherwise, it is just too clunky and useless to make a real difference in a game, unless you can somehow get a big group of them together. It is definitely a fun unit to play with, though. So that wraps it up for the tank guide. I hope you got some tips on which tanks to use in your games. Hopefully you learned a few things that can help you get as much use out of your tanks as possible. Let me know if you like this kind of video. I'm planning on making similar ones for every major unit group. I put a lot of effort into this, so be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. See you on the battlefield.